Namaste and welcome to tape one of the Techspert Relaxation Course, a series designed to flush stress from your system like a kind of enema for your soul, but without any of the hose pipes up the bumhole stuff. First, find a soft bit of ground to park your arse on. We recommend a nice spot in the park with the sun gently caressing your face like a large but gentle man's hand wrapped in an oven mitt. But try and choose a quiet, private spot. You don't want to get halfway through this tape, so close to achieving zen, when a bunch of chavs go flying by on their stolen BMXs, hooting and calling you a bellend. Even in 2021, the noble art of meditation is still seen by some unsavoury types as, and I quote, something that only knobbers do. Now you've found your spot, so cross your legs in front of you and place your hands gently on your knees. Make sure you're comfortable, maybe blow your nose, scratch that niggling itch in your groan, whatever you need to do. And then let's close our eyes, breathe deep and begin. You feel your body getting lighter as all of your burdens seep from your pores like angry sweat. Stressed about that big work meeting? Not anymore you're not. Worried that you're an ugly failure who's going to die alone, unloved, and that your body will only be discovered several weeks later when your flesh begins to decompose into gloopy fluid and drip into the downstairs flat? Be gone, foul thoughts. This nasty seepage continues until finally every last bit of dread and despair has been excreted from your form, and now you're as light as a feather. Lighter, in fact. But not so light that you're actually gonna, you know, lift up off the ground and float away into space. That would be f***ing terrifying right there. Imagine that you're stood in a forest surrounded by trees. Daylight penetrates through the foliage above and everything is light and calm and peaceful. The only sounds you hear are happy birdsong and the chirping of insects. Friendly insects, not wasps or any of the c***y ones. You find yourself walking forwards, breathing deep. <sighs> the air smells like moss and pine and a little bit like a freshly unwrapped Cadbury's cream egg. Twigs crunch softly underfoot and a gentle breeze tickles your skin. And then, up ahead, you see the trees begin to thin out. You're approaching a clearing right in the middle of the forest. And as you step out into open space, you see a majestic lake spread out before you, stretching into the distance. The water is the colour of blue wicked, an unnatural hue, but one that somehow invites you to drink deep. But as you saunter to the edge of the lake, you notice that the water ripples gently, and that's when you see two figures frolicking in the water just 20 yards out. One of them is your mum and the other is me. Your mum giggles and bats her eyelashes. Oh hi, she says. What's this I've found lurking down here? Thought it were a bloody sea serpent come to gobble me up. But of course it's not a sea serpent at all. It's just my penis. And then I do your mum and she bloody loves it. Techspert Weekly! So this week has actually been a fairly chill one as far as tech shenanigans go, despite the fact that Samsung dropped yet another Galaxy Unpacked event on this midweek. Although this Wednesday's event was actually pretty sedate as well, focusing on just three new Galaxy Book laptops rather than fresh bendy phones or wearables or whatnot. These three notebooks boast a tough but slender finish, as well as 11th gen Intel grunt and bugger loads of Samsung features for connecting to your other shiny gadgets. The Galaxy Book Pro upgrades the vanilla model's PLS screen to a punchy AMOLED panel while offering an even slimmer and lighter finish. And there's also a Galaxy Book Pro 360 model that can be converted into a big old tablet thanks to that 360 degree hinge, complete with a hot bit of S Pen action. Although regrettably there's no spare orifice to shove that thing away in when you're done. And if you fancy a full on feast of all of the specs and features of those new Sami laptops and you want to see how they all stack up against one another as well, well good news I've done a full hands on comparison with the three right here on Techspert. This week also saw the official global release of the Black Shark 4, a surprisingly affordable game and blower that costs from 429 quid here in Blighty. This near 6.7 inch unit doesn't sport the same killer specs as the ROG Phone 5, but it does have cute pop-up trigger buttons, some nifty accessories and enough gaming features to choke a particularly girtsome hippo. My full unboxing video with the Black Shark 4 is live right now, complete with the extensive gaming tests that I usually do to see how the Black Shark 4 handles some serious Genshin Impact action. And yes, all of that is definitely why my wrists are all limp and knackered this week, uh, no other reason. And this week I also revisited Google's Pixel 5 flagship phone to see if it was just as lovable six months on. And Google has also been accidentally teasing its upcoming budget handset, the Pixel 5a 5G, by publishing the following photo on its blog, a photo which 9to5Google swiftly figured out was actually taken on said handset. 
For anyone who hasn't really been keeping abreast of all the Pixel E news, well, for a while it was rumored that the Pixel 5e wasn't actually going to be happening until Google confirmed that yes, the Pixel 5e 5G is definitely a thing, just like James Corden. But unlike James Corden, that's actually good news. And unfortunately, it doesn't sound like the Google Pixel 5 8 5G will be launching or hitting stores or doing much of anything until much later in 2021. Uh, Google reckons it'll probably be happening about the same sort of time as the Google Pixel 4a last year. So that was around sort of July, August time. So definitely don't get too excited at the prospect of the Google Pixel 5a potentially making an appearance at the Google I.O. event, which is kicking off mid-May. And also, there might be a chance that it doesn't even hit Blighty at all because Google has only confirmed that it will be releasing in the US. US and Japan so far, although I would be really, really surprised indeed if this budget blower didn't make it to UK shores. And that's about all of the highly thrilling tech news for this week. It has been a really quiet one, which means it's time for a fresh news segment, uh, which will hopefully just kill an extra couple of minutes. A segment which I'm going to call Gadgets Which Are Proper Mint. Oh, that gadget is proper mint. And today's gadget, which is proper mint, is the Evercade, the console for old gits like myself who don't want none of your dead souls shenanigans. Thank you very much. It's a bit like a Game Gear or a PSP or a Nintendo Switch for you youngins, except it's designed to exclusively play retro style 8-bit and 16-bit games. The design is neat and compact and the games come on cartridges just like they used to when life was good and men were men and smoke and fags didn't give you cancer, it just put hairs on your chest. Even the game boxes are proper retro, absolutely love them. And look at this as well, a manual. Can you believe it? A friggin' paper manual. And kids, you won't even know what these bloody things are, will you? So basically, uh, back in the day, games didn't start with a two hour long tutorial which gently took you by the hand and led you through all of the various games mechanics. All you had was a manual like this which told you everything you need to know. A equals jump, B equals shoot, you've got three lives and no continues to complete the whole bastard thing and good luck f***o. And the Evercade game collections are a bit of a mixed bag admittedly for every two or three sort of golden quality titles that used to waste entire weekends on back in the day there's always a couple of clunkers in there that you would never even look at twice. Basically just like the classic publisher compilations from back in the day. But one of the best things about the Evercade other than being able to play Booger Man while you're on the lavvy is definitely the fact you've actually got a save game feature in there so you don't have to waste hours and hours replaying the same levels over and over again which gives you more time to drink booze and yeah you've still got all the quality original music too so anyway, that's the Evercade. You can grab one right now. The starter pack on Amazon is 60 quid. The cartridges, of course, you'll have to buy separate as well. And they do tend to cost around sort of 15, 20 quid. So the cost will mount up. But if you're all about the nostalgia and you've got a bit of uh, cash in the bank, well, job done. But anyway, that's enough stalling. Now it's time for the part of the show that's about as fun as a punch yourself in the bollocks until you puke competition. It's fewer comments. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Fewer comments. Okay, so first up, apparently OnlyFans is something a little bit darker than just another rip-off of Patreon, which I totally did not get last week. Stefan says he thinks OnlyFans is just a little Patreon alternative. How cute. Uh, Etienne says, yes, Chris, I don't know what OnlyFans is. We believe you, although thousands wouldn't. I mean, is, is this a rabbit hole that I want to dive face first down? I get the feeling that maybe ignorance is bliss on this one. Apparently, according to the website, if you use social media and produce your own content, you should be using OnlyFans. So I guess I tick those boxes. Although admittedly, I only use Twitter to grumble about how shit everything is. Whether you're uploading tutorials, tips, behind the scenes footage, or just endless selfies, a lot of your followers would be willing to pay for them. See, it's, it just sounds like some Patreon bullshit. Is there something here that I'm really not getting? Jesus Christ, according to this, I could be earning between $25,000 and $125,000 per month? What? Jesus Christ, what am I doing shooting this shower? <laughs> I could be earning, earning the big bucks, baby. Oh, hang on. Right. Uh, okay, so when you Google OnlyFans, one of the first articles that pops up is uh, from the New York Times. How OnlyFans changed sex work forever. OnlyFans, the platform for sex workers and celebrities to sell subscription content. What a random combination. Go on to this. Everyone and their mum is on it. Mums, eh? Hmm. Okay, so I've been a big, naive dum-dum. Right, uh, moving on. Uh, next comment, datingsiteonline.com says adult casual dating. Um, cool. I'm starting to think that the internet's a bit of a sordid place, you know. Uh, next up, Amir says, I can ask personal questions. Um, yeah, go, go for it, so whatever you, whatever you want. We're all friends here. There are no secrets in the Spurton army, only everlasting regrets. 
And our uh, Mongolian buddy, uh, Neutrally Presented, is back. He says that Mongolia made a phone called Hulan 21 and it's weird. Could you check it out? All right, so it's uh, made by a manufacturer called LL. Not sure how to pronounce that. Um, just going on the website now. Understandably, it's all in Mongolian and Google Translate wants absolutely naught to do with it. Quite a nice website though. Just a shame I don't understand what any of it actually says. Oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. There's a languages bit in the menu. So let's, uh, let's get it on to English. Uh, okay, that did absolutely sweet FA. Yeah, go on here, go on to English and no luck. So I've got absolutely no idea uh, what any of the specs or anything are, but it certainly looks very distinctive, that's for sure. Are those buttons actually on the front of the phone or is that just a weird perspective? I do like the camera setup though. It kind of makes the back look like a miniature pool table. Very funky indeed. Uh, next up, Hugh Williams says, you've gone way OTT on the course banter lately. You can and did used to do better. It's gone from clever to vulgar over the last few months. I used to do clever jokes? Clearly the lockdown is affecting my mind even worse than I thought because I was pretty sure it was just knob gags and your mama jokes from the off, basically. And Theseus has replied, uh, I like to think he's gone full lockdown cabin fever nuts. I mean, my, my main source of conversation these days is a hyperactive five-year-old who thinks the funniest thing in the world is the word willy. And I mean, she's not wrong because willy is a fundamentally hilarious word. Willy. <laughs> willy. Uh, anyway, next up, Tony Mohammed says, Greetings from sweet and tropical Trinidad and Tobago, and God damn it, I already, already hear you. Seriously, can people who live in sun-kissed tropical climes just pretend just for the sake of my sanity that they come from Bradford or Milton Keynes or something? Uh, Tony continues, we are having great weather as usual. So happy for you, Tony. So, so happy. Though, you know what? It's actually fairly sunny-ish here. Sometimes breaks through all of the clouds and the crap that's going on up there. Went out earlier, didn't even need to put a coat on. What do you think about that, eh? Uh, but the dammed beaches and the rivers are closed due to COVID. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, that really sucks to be fair. I mean, hopefully things will stop sucking quite so bad at some point really soon. Yeah, at least the pubs and stuff are starting to open up here to some capacity, at least. So like last week I had a cheeky Stella in a sort of makeshift patio bit uh, on, on the street. And uh, yeah, that was, that was quite nice actually. Even if drinking cold beer in like five degrees weather while wearing a winter's hat in exactly the way it's supposed to be enjoyed. Uh, Patrick says, for those of a certain age and having used both, I would say that Apple equals swap shop and Android equals tiz was. 100% mate. Yeah, Apple is definitely the uber posh, chin stroking, polite, ooh la di da. Absolute cock piece of the smartphone realm and Android is definitely just the 100% anarchic, just does not give any f whatsoever effort. Uh, next up, Dave A. Driffield says, when I saw the title, I thought you'd spurt it over to the dark side. Wasn't it a dodgy apple that did for Sleep and Beauty? And that was actually Snow White, uh, unfortunately. Sleep and Beauty was the spinning wheel thing. The only reason I know this is because my daughter was absolutely obsessed with Snow White when she was just two years old as well. And let me tell you what, it's still f***ing terrifying. Like you're only 10 minutes in when Snow White is suddenly attacked by a huntsman who wants to carve her heart out of her chest and put it into a bloody box. And she manages to escape and then literally like 30 seconds later, she's in a forest being attacked by rapey tree creature things straight out of the bloody evil dead. And this is a movie for kids. I mean, I'm not sure about my daughter, but it sure as hell put the shits up me. Uh, next up, the Sentinel 909 says people are literally making entire dedicated videos to the new purple iPhone. Yeah, I mean, iPhones, they get the clicks, man. What, that's, you know, that's why or every single YouTuber out there, as soon as any new phone comes out, they're immediately comparing it to the iPhone friggin' 12. I mean, let's face it, they'd all compare a bloody toaster to the iPhone if they could. And next up, Tio says, I'm also a Leo and I also have shop canines. Is this actually a thing? Yeah, what the mother F is actually going on there? It's, yeah, that's, that's just bizarre. I, I don't like. Um, Alex B says, every time I watch one of your videos, I feel like I should be calling social services. Uh, yeah, I've definitely had that comment before. Uh, police, I get quite a lot as well. Uh, Pink Doggo says, hey, Textbert lad, what's your favorite whiskey region? Uh, whiskey region. Would it be a cheat just to say Scotland <laughs> in general? I've had some really nice whiskies from the Orkneys. Those are, you know, a couple of those really stick out in my mind. The last one was from Kirkwall Beer, I think it was called. Uh, really, really nice single malt. Definitely partial to a good bit of sake every now and then as well, or just to mix it up. Uh, why not? You know, variety is the spice of life. Uh, next up, Koos Swart says, wow, seriously gonna ignore this crappy channel from now on. Well, Coos Swart, you really should be called Coos Smart because that is a damn 
Fine idea. Why waste your time with any of this YouTube shenanigans? Use it wisely. We're only on Earth for a limited amount of time. Get out there and expand your horizons. Maybe find a new hobby. A bit of pigeon fancying. I've heard that's quite popular. Or take up a sport, you know, get a bit of exercise and all that. Gets you out the house. Means I have more time alone with your mum. There you go, another clever gag for Hugh Williams. Hope you're sated, sir. And next up, David Ashmore says, hopefully Apple won't release a rip-off Mr. Wanksock. Oh, Christ. I mean, if they did, it would cost you like 50 quid. You'd have to buy a separate adapter and it would probably break after one good spurt. Oh, anyway, I am way over time uh, as usual. So a massive thank you to everyone who left uh, comments last week. It was great fun reading all of those. Please do uh, slap your theories, questions, comments, whatever you want down below. We'll get to as many of those as possible next week, next Friday at noon. Uh, let's have a quick look at next week, what's coming up. And either way, I've been forgetting to update my calendar or there's absolutely bugger all going on next week by the looks of it. Um, so hooray. I'll have to think up some new crappy segments to waste a lot more time in next week's Techspert Weekly. Uh, but yeah, no, the lots of videos will be going live because I've got a whole heap of uh, text still stacked up, ready to review for you fine folk. In the meantime, have yourselves a fan-bloody-tastic weekend. Hope you uh, manage to get out and enjoy life uh, wherever you are. Uh, uh, stay safe and have yourselves a great week as you've just said that already bloody hell and please do pause subscribe ding that notifications bell i hadn't said those yet had i uh, and i'm off to join only fans and uh yeah i mean 100 grand a month i'll get my nipples out for that sod it love you <laughs>